Boston is not really like a big city. It's, it's really a collection of neighborhoods shoved together with a bulldozer. When you think about it, it's like nobody even says they're from Boston. They say, I'm from Southie, I'm from Dorchester, I'm from JP. So to me, it's almost like a self-contained -con series of neighborhoods, all of which are very different from each other. Jamaica Plain was and probably is the most sophisticated of those neighborhoods in the sense that it's multi-racial and multicultural to a greater extent than most of the neighborhoods in Boston. The white people weren't as rich and the, and the people of color had a little more money and the Latinos were growing and, and some of them were flourishing. And I think you saw it in the Wake Up the Earth Festival, which could not have happened in any other, I think, neighborhood. Bars are always the most conservative places, so it was very typical to have a neighborhood that was was now black would have a bar that was almost all white. Like, and there were several of these at Eggleston Square. Visionaries, if I may use that inflated word, like Eddie Burke, realized if you wanted to make money as a as a publican or a bar owner, you would do well to you know, not go with the prevailing neighborhood sediment. Because bars are places where people drink, there are also places where people's prejudices come out more readily. And and at a certain point in the in the just about the time I moved to JP, Eddie Burke said, Look, you know, the first lesbian had come in and the first person of color and they had been harassed and, you know, things were not good. And Eddie said to the regulars, look, anybody who fucks with any people who come in here and I don't care what who they are, what color they are, what they what they look like, what, what whether they're hippies or not, anybody who fucks with anybody who comes in this bar is going to be banned for life. Did it with a couple of people because at first people I don't think believed him. So Doyle's then became kind of a shelter for people who were not comfortable in bars elsewhere and ultimately then Doyle's became the sponsor of lesbian softball teams and you know that everybody, Doyle's was a place where everybody felt comfortable and I think Eddie deserves a lot of credit and people like him who came out of more working class Jamaica Plain when it was pretty, pretty white, but who got that this was a place that was going to be changing and that you could either, you know, do the over my dead body thing or you could really encourage it and profit from it and benefit from it. I wanted to make documentaries and I thought, well, why not about where I live, you know, because it's an interesting place. And so we made these little five minute weird Super 8 films. We were shooting on silent Super 8 cameras with just tape recorded sound. Because I had grown up in the 40s when they had newsreels in front of the movies when you went to the movies. So that's why we called it Jamaica Play Newsreel. We did one about Sportsman's Tennis Club. We did one about Franklin Park. What else? We did the, those Wake Up the Earth festivals. We did the human race to end the arms race. The first Vietnam Veterans Parade, I believe in the United States, took place in Jamaica Plain in 1981. And we did a documentary about that.
There was a house on Forest Hill Street with nine fireplaces, and it was trying to be sold by this elderly white couple for $35,000. And I could not buy it because the banks, no bank would make a mortgage on it because that part of Jamaica Plain and almost all of Jamaica Plain was being redlined, meaning that the banks drew literally a line around certain neighborhoods and said, these neighborhoods are going downhill. We are not going to lend any money in these neighborhoods because if we do, we're going to lose our shirt. Again, because of the way JP is, was, um, there was this little nonprofit outfit called Urban Edge. And um, we went to Urban Edge and said, look, we, you know, we're, we're trying to buy this house. We're, we're ready to make, we're ready to make a 50% down payment. We'll put, we'll put $15,000 on this and the banks won't take it. And so we started a political campaign with Urban Edge to publicize and defeat redlining. I think I'm optimistic in the sense that I think people are, are pretty good, but I'm, I'm pessimistic about our ability to maintain any kind of leadership role in the in the world. I think our time is, I think I'm on the downside of American um, domination. And, you know, that's probably good in the sense that other cultures deserve their chance. And I think China and India are the future, you know, at this point. And that's okay. Um, but, um, it probably means that we're going to have to adjust to lower standards of living in the future than we have now, and that's not so bad either. Uh, so, yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I love being alive now, and I regret that I probably won't live, you know, to see the next 50 years. But um, it's, uh, it's been a good ride so far, and I, uh, I will regret leaving it. They have to love me back. Is, is important. And they got to be lovable. They've got to be people who either have something I don't have that I want to learn or people that, you know, can complete me in the sense that they are have something that I don't have that, that will make us better as a whole than we are as parts. Provincial. <laughs>